ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Tundra Dude 34 YouTube channel. Today, a very important video. It is a three month update on this 2022 TRD Pro Tundra. The good, the bad, the ugly. There are some things that have made their way to the con list in driving this truck every single day. Truck is still very brand new, just hit 1500 miles on it, but I do wanna give you guys an update every few months on owning this truck. First off, the truck, I wanna say right off the bat, is totally sweet. I still highly recommend it. The TRD Pro trim is amazing. They've done a lot of things to this truck to separate it from the pack, if you will. It's not just a regular Tundra with a grill anymore. Um, the offset is different. The track is wider on this truck, which is why you have the marker lights on it. The exterior look of it is very unique compared to your regular Toyota Tundra. Now we know with the new generation, everything is brand new. There is no more V8. Some like that, some dislike that. Personally, I think they should have kept it as a third engine option for those that aren't ready to go into the forced induction, smaller displacement engine game yet, but that's just me, I get it. This is the way the automotive industry is moving these days. Um, but the interior setup is great and the truck drives, you know, fantastic. But let's talk about pros and cons over the first three months. This morning when I was coming home from work, the Sirius XM uh, three month free trial ended in the middle of my ride. So today, uh, is literally 90 days of ownership of this truck. But before we get into the cons, let's talk about some of the pros of the truck. I have a list, I don't wanna forget anything, so we will go off of this list. We will take the truck for a ride, talking about what I think is the best part of this truck so far. Uh, but let's go over some of the things on the interior that we love about this truck. First off, the interior all around is amazing. The update is amazing. Easy to use buttons easy to reach buttons, and they're still physical buttons, which is another thing I absolutely love about the truck. Everything is top notch in here as far as, uh, you know, some of the things we wanted, the upgrades. There's not random chrome everywhere. Uh, the colors flow together really nicely. Um, everything is laid out for use, not for look, and I love that. And a lot of automotive manufacturers are going to everything on their infotainment screens. This truck still has, like I said, knobs and physical buttons, which are great, and I'm a big fan of that. Another thing I absolutely love is the gauge cluster. Um, big fan of that. Now you can set up the gauge cluster the way you want. The way I have it set up is with the four gauges on the side, so we get the oil temp, we get the transmission temp, um, and we get the boost gauge with the iForce and the battery gauge with the Max. So you get a little bit of everything with that setup. Um, I always like to keep an eye, especially, you know, with driving, when I drive on the highway with this truck, just to see what the transmission temperature is and the oil temperature is with this new engine and being able to give you guys uh, reviews on this truck. So everything about the interior is awesome. I still love the red. I know a lot of people think the red is no go. If you don't like it, guess what? There's black interior for the TRD Pro, so you can go that direction. And people ask this all the time. With Solar Octane, there is no red interior available. It is just the black. So that's a good thing because you wouldn't want this red interior with an orange truck. It wouldn't look very good. So everything about the interior and all the technology in here is great. Um, the only complaint I have, I will say this still, is the wireless phone charger. It's hit or miss. It's whether you have um, you know, a case on the phone or not, because for a while we were getting it to work well without a case, but got an iPhone 14 now, no case in the beginning, and it's still, every time I hit a bump, it would break the charge. So pretty much everything to do with the interior and the technology of this truck is definitely still on the pro list. There is a lot of stuff in here that wasn't in the last generation of Tundra. There's sensors all over the place. Um, you know, you get the bird's eye view 360. When you're backing up, if you get close to something, you start to hear a beep, and as you get closer, uh, the beep becomes more frequent, as if you were in like a missile lock situation in a fighter jet. Um, but they're not crazy with the sensors to the point where every single move you make, something's going off or something's warning you. Yes, there are a lot of sensors. Yes, there are a lot of cameras, but they're not intrusive to the point where it ruins the ride. It still is your classic Tundra when it comes to um, the overall experience of the truck. Now, this is one of the best parts of the iForce Max right here. When you get out onto a main road and you just hit the pedal, and this is when you enjoy spending this kind of money on a truck. It's insanely fast. Of course, the noise is fed in as far as the exhaust. Um, it does sound good. I still am not annoyed by that. Some people have taken their truck to the dealership to shut the sound off, and that's up to you if you want to do that, but I enjoy the sound. It doesn't come on all the time. Like, I think people have the idea that it's just always a fed-in engine noise, and that's just not the case. When you're driving down the road, all you can really hear is the Falcon Wild Peak tires. People ask how loud these tires are. They're not that bad. You could hear them. They're definitely there. 
uh, but it's not something that you would call annoying in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, I like a little tire noise, but it's fine. Wind noise, all the things people talk about. Some people have had some really bad luck with the new generation Tundra when it comes to, you know, there's been a wastegate issue, wind noise, interior uh, creaking, everything feeling really cheap. We're gonna talk about that interior thing a little later on in this video, but as far as the overall truck experience, uh, you know, when it comes to issues, I haven't had any issues yet. This, the truck is still very much brand new, uh, but no wind noise, no creaking, nothing like that. I feel like the interior is top notch when it comes to, uh, you know, just the construction of it and the feel of it. It feels like, you know, something that should be in a truck this expensive, but that's just me. Everybody's different. Some people um, are not a fan of some of the materials they used in here. But as far as the drive, and this is where the truck absolutely scores all day long. I've driven a lot of Tundras, old and new. Um, this suspension, the TRD Pro suspension has always been fantastic, uh, so that's one thing. But just the overall new design of the truck, the ground up remodel of the truck. If you're gonna spend this kind of money, you know, it's cool to have, you know, JBL sound system and, and a cool grill that has the classic Toyota Heritage situation on the front and, you know, all of that stuff. That's awesome. But at the end of the day, you want the truck to ride good. You want the engine and transmission to work together flawlessly to make it just a great situation. And that's exactly what this truck is. The driving experience is something that I haven't found anything bad with. We took a trip uh, with this truck, about a 300 mile trip. Uh, you know, maybe about three, four weeks ago, and I got 19 MPG on the highway. I wasn't out there super miling or trying to get the thing, you know, to have the best fuel mileage. I was just driving like a normal human, like you would every single day on the highway, passing cars when I need to, going normal speed. Um, I, was, I just drove the truck 180 miles, and then I checked the pump-to-pump -pump calculation to see what the truck was, and it turned out to be 18.98 which isn't terrible. The old Tundra, when I would do that same route and do that same calculation, uh, was around, I believe, 15.5. So it's definitely gone up. Um, and there you go. The engine shuts off every time you slow down or stop or anytime you go into reverse. Uh, the hybrid kicks in. Um, but overall, the driving experience is amazing. The truck feels great, very compliant, good feedback. It's not like you're floating on a cloud. Uh, but the power is always there. There is no, uh, you know, feeling that when you, I always like to use this term, if I'm driving down the road and there's a car that hits their brakes in front of me and I have to slow down and then pick up speed, say I slow down to like 25, 30 and have to get back up to 55, um, it's not a confusion between the engine and transmission, the transmission finding the gear to get back up to the speed you want. This thing, the minute you put your foot back on the pedal, you're right back up to speed. You really got to watch the speedometer in this truck because it's smooth enough to the point where you think you're going the speed limit and all of a sudden you're way over. Uh, it's just a completely different feeling as far as that. But just everything works together perfectly. Uh, you know, the frame, the suspension, just the truck driving experience and ride comfort is top notch. And even if you dislike the new generation Tundra, if you've driven it, you will agree with that because it doesn't feel like the old one at all when it comes to ride comfort. Uh, the old one feels like a classic pickup truck. This thing definitely feels like something that uh, they spent the time, they sat in the boardroom and they figured out how to make these trucks more comfortable to drive in everyday situations. Some people will like that, some people won't, but we could talk all day about ride comfort and you will always hear a positive thumbs up experience from me when it comes to it because everything about that Bueno. Okay, so before we get to the cons, let me just recap my pros for this truck so far. The ride comfort, absolutely top notch. The interior is amazing. Uh, the update is exactly what was needed with this truck. It looks good. Everything works perfectly. Still like the fact that there are buttons in here and everything is not just on the infotainment screen. It's a very powerful truck. It's a great transmission. Uh, you know, like I said, it gets you down the road beautifully. You will absolutely love everything about the driving experience of this truck. Technology is just the right amount. There's a lot of stuff going on here now compared to the old generation, but I still feel like they didn't overdo it. Um, and that's a good thing. It's where it needs to be as far as standards and all that, uh, you know, with all the automotive industry moving forward and to try to make the safest vehicle possible. But I don't feel like it's intrusive to the point where, where it will annoy you or um, ruin the experience with the vehicle. 
And last but not least on the pro list is the look of the TRD Pro. Um, I like everything they've done with this truck to make it a little bit different and stand out from the rest of the Tundra pack. Uh, I think it's a great looking truck and I'm absolutely a happy owner with that. But now you guys want to hear some of the cons of the truck. I do have a few cons and I look forward to hearing from other 2022 slash 2023 owners to see what you think about these in no particular order. Let's talk about what we talked about when we were driving the truck a moment ago. People say uh, wind noise interior is cheap. That kind of stuff when it comes to complaints about the truck. From my personal experience in this truck, I have no wind noise um, at the windows or at the mirrors where everybody's talking about that. I don't have any wind noise whatsoever. Um, as far as the interior goes, I don't feel like it's cheap. I feel like um, there's a lot of soft touch on it. Uh, it has red leather all over the place in here. It doesn't feel like it's too plasticky and annoying. But one thing I will say that feels out of place in here when it comes to interior materials is the center console lid. Some people complain that it shakes and rattles. It doesn't shake and rattle for me, but when you look around, to me it looks like a premium interior. But when I open this, it just feels like it's made of plastic. Just, just, it doesn't belong. The old generation Tundra center console top uh, felt way more sturdy to me and way more durable. This just, it just doesn't have the feel there. It doesn't have the, the good sound when you close it. Like it's, it's something uh, made of good material. So I'm going to go ahead and agree with that. What some people have been saying about the console top. Now there's a lot more you could do with it. It has an opening on top. It has a little tray that folds back. Now that may, if that gets a little loose, that will rattle. But right now I don't have any rattling whatsoever, but I do feel as if it's a little cheap as far as the other stuff on the interior. I will keep you updated to let you know if there's any rattles or anything with that. But as far as interior goes, that's going to be a con for me for now. Number two, fuel mileage. The truck is brand new, but I got to tell you, the fuel mileage has not gotten any better. It's actually gotten a little bit worse. I'm at 13.8 right now in the fuel mileage game on my average. Um, when I took the trip in the highway, that average shot up to 16. When I came back home and I do my daily trip to work, which is like one and a half to two miles um, and stop and go, it went back down to 13.8. Uh, so that's where we're living with the fuel mileage now. How am I driving the truck? Uh, the newness is worn off. I'm not driving it super fun or anything like that. Um, I'm driving it normal, like an everyday vehicle now. And the fuel mileage hasn't really gotten to the point where I expected it to be um, as far as these great numbers that a hybrid will bring you. Now, one thing Toyota wanted you to know up front and right away is this hybrid was set up for torque horsepower, uh, you know, towing capability, stuff like that. It's not your normal everyday hybrid, uh, but I just want to make that known 13.8 right now in my average. Uh, so we'll see, you know, like I said, only 1500 miles on the truck as the truck gets a little more broken in, maybe that fuel mileage will go up, but I will let you know. As far as daily trips go with the truck, when you shut the truck off, it tells you every time um, what that trip's MPG was. And I'm always in like the 15, 16, 18, depending on what I've done. Uh, but that average just keeps dropping every time. So just wanted to keep that in mind and let everybody know. Again, if you are an owner of a 2022 slash 2023 new generation Tundra, comment below on all these cons and pros and let me know how you feel. I also have to say, and I said this in the last video, I think every video I make on updates of this truck, turning radius um, is still not the best in this truck. I'm getting used to that. I'm getting used to the idea that the turning radius isn't very good. Um, but it's so different from the old generation Tundra as far as when you're turning it. I felt like the old generation Tundra had amazing turning radius. Um, this thing is a cruise ship when you're trying to turn it. Uh, so that's something that I will bring up from time to time. Hopefully uh, down the road they figure out a way to improve it. I don't know if they will, but you want cons? That's definitely a con because uh, certain areas where I was always able to make a complete U-turn, uh, it's now a guaranteed three-point turn every time I do it. Um, and, you know, backing it into driveways and stuff like that is a little bit different. But, yeah, it's something to get used to. I am used to it now, but it's still something I want to let you, the potential consumer, know in case you go out and buy this truck. Here's something that's a little weird but very annoying with the infotainment system. I couldn't tell if it was my Apple CarPlay or not. I can now tell you it is uh, not just Apple CarPlay. <clears throat> so if a text is being read back to me, the music stays on so I can't hear um, the voice telling me what the text says. If I say the term, hey Toyota, which I say it right now. What would you like to do? 
and that's what it'll do. And then you can ask Toyota a question and it'll tell you anything you want. But if you have any kind of music on or anything, it doesn't mute the music so you can use that option. It just comes on with the music. So you'll hear the voice and the music to where you can't hear anything the voice is saying. So that might just need an update or uh, something along those lines. But I think I read somewhere once somebody complaining about that as well on their new generation Tundra. So hopefully there's a software update to where when you ask the truck a question, everything mutes and you can hear, or when it reads back a text, everything mutes and you can hear. In the old generation Tundra uh, with Apple CarPlay, you could have the text read back as well and it would mute the music so you can actually hear and respond to the text. So that is something that uh, I wanted to bring up with you guys. Now, let's talk about something in the driving of the truck uh, that happened to me a couple times. So there is no turbo lag in this truck per se, but one thing I did notice, and this happened to me twice, I was sitting at a light waiting to make a right. When there was an opening, I hit the pedal to go and it took a minute for the truck to actually get going to the point where I almost got a little scared of the car coming at me because I had you know enough time to go, but I had to get my foot on that pedal a little bit and the truck didn't move for a couple seconds and then it went. So that happened to me two times, and now I know that when I pull up to make that right, I'm gonna make sure there is a lot of room just in case the truck does that. Has that ever happened to any of you out there to where you put your foot down on the pedal and nothing happens for a few seconds and then the truck goes? Because it doesn't happen in a normal situation and I've tested it out here and there, uh, but those two times freaked me out a little bit, and now I know to hold up and wait before I try to get into traffic uh, you know, in a sped up situation. So I just wanted to make that known. And again, I look forward to hearing uh, from some owners on that one. But that's really it for my cons list. I'm looking to see if there's anything else on here. Um, <clears throat> so to recap real quick, console safe, it's not bad. It just doesn't feel as sturdy as the old one. And I feel like it doesn't match the rest of the quality of the interior. I would redesign this, maybe put it back to something along the lines of what they used to have in the old generation. The old generation had a little tray here, but it didn't open. And that might be a lot of the, the feel of why this isn't where it needs to be. It was just a solid state kind of a tray here. This one has a lot of opening and stuff on top. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of the top of the center console, so that's on the con list. Fuel mileage, gotta put it on the cons for now. Hopefully it comes up as the truck breaks in. It's a wait and see game on that one as well. Turning radius, not the best, but you do get used to it. Uh, but it is quite different from the old generation. If you were to get in an old generation and do a little driving, some U-turns, some backing into driveways and tight spots, and then jumped right into a new gen, you would see that turning radius con uh, really come to light. And you would understand what I'm saying with that. Um, also, with the infotainment system with the con, uh, when the voice comes on to help you out for information or to read back a text or all that, the music doesn't go off. That's just the software update kind of thing. And last but not least is the pedal. And when I'm sitting at that light and I'm trying to make that right and I put my foot down on the pedal to get into traffic, it took a couple seconds to get going. Um, so that's something, maybe a software update, ECU update will come. I wanna hear if that's just me or if that's other Tundra owners out there. But overall experience of the truck, I absolutely love it. I'm still very happy I got it. I love what they've done with not just the Pro, but the new generation Tundra when it comes to some of the things people were talking about. Um, the availability of the locking rear diff, the TRD off-road, the TRD Pro, and the TRD Sport packages give you more than ever. You start to get the functional stuff now, multi-terrain select, crawl control, uh, things that are more than just a wheel and tire package when it comes to an off-road um, add-on. So I think that's a great thing they've done there. Uh, some of the stuff that everybody has always talked about. We now have a crew max with a six and a half foot bed if we want it. Uh, there's definitely some options out there. Everybody has been talking about for years and years and years, they wanted the truck to have technology like the big three, and now it does. Some people are happy about that. Some people aren't. We know a lot of people aren't happy that there is no more V8. Um, should they have kept a V8, like I said in the beginning of the video, maybe as a third option for a few years to get the people used to uh, what they have in these trucks now, uh, which is the 3.4 liter V6 twin turbo, either regular iForce or the iForce Max, which is with the hybrid. And I must say both engines, uh, they do drive quite well. The iForce Max is definitely uh, nice and powerful and the truck is very smooth, but 
for the way Toyota is and where um, some of the consumers may be with Toyota, I think that might have been something I would have done, but I don't write uh, the rules or sign the checks in Toyota. I just talk about them. So I have no problem with the iForce Max engine. I've had nothing but good times with it. The only addition we've done to it, we added some TRD air filters in the air boxes, and it makes you hear the little bit of the turbo whistle a lot more, especially when the truck is in sport mode. I spend a lot of my time in normal mode as far as the drive mode select. Normal mode is just fine with this truck. It's powerful. It's linear in sport mode. The truck feels like it had like six really strong cups of coffee and it just wants to go. Normal is more of a nice experience. And when you want that truck to do what you want it to do and go a little bit faster, you put your foot down on the pedal and it's a nice linear experience. So normal is what I enjoy in this. If you get up into the capstone, they have like a sport plus and you can make a custom setup and all that. Uh, this just has a few drive modes, but normal is the way to go. Last but not least, I will say this and I can't wait to hear from some of you other owners out there. I feel as if black with the red interior is the best color options you could go with the truck. And here's why. All the TRD stuff is red. There's camo on the outside of the pro trucks now as far as, uh, you know, on the front bumper, on the rear lip, on the tailgate, uh, the fender flares. Everything has camo on it. The camo with the midnight black exterior flow together very nicely and looks like it belongs along with that TRD red, the red and black you can't beat. And that's why I think the red interior looks so good with the black exterior. It just flows together perfectly. I think this is still the best color combo you can get. Um, I know there are folks out there who have Lunar Rock in red. They have the black with the black and hey, to each their own. But to me, this is an amazing setup. So, so far, I don't have any buyer's remorse or regret at all. The truck is awesome. Uh, really like the Toyota Connect app but uh, it's free right now. When it starts becoming a subscription thing, I won't use it anymore because I'm not gonna pay for a subscription for an app to remote start the truck. I'll just get in the truck and start it myself, that's fine. I figured with a $70,000 truck, I could get remote start to stay on for a very long time. I know there are trials and some of them are longer than others. I don't know what remote start is. I feel like it's three years, I could be totally wrong. Uh, but you know, if you wanna use the subscription-based app you can, there's a lot of different things you can do on there with that. But uh, right now when everything's free, I like it. Unfortunately, Sirius XM is gone as of today. Now I'll just use my Apple CarPlay and uh, listen to music off of that instead of paying for subscription on that as well. So overall experience is great. Uh, let me know what you think about the pros and cons. Absolutely love this truck and happy I bought it. And I wanna hear from you other 2022 slash 2023 owners. Are you a fan of your truck? How long have you had it? What are some of your pros and cons? Till next time, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, at TundraDude34, TundraDude34, gmail.com. You guys have a great day. Be safe, be well, and thank you for watching.